So uh, this is one of my absolute favourite trees um, on shrubs uh, is hazel. Hazel is just such a useful tree. Um, super timber, you can cut it all with a hand saw, a silky saw, don't need any big machinery. You can use it in its like pole form, very hard, uh, long lasting, hard wearing, um, carvable and easy to grow because you collect it, grow it from nuts. And these were gathered from a tree that I planted about 30 years ago, or several trees that I planted 30 years ago, um, now producing lots of quite small nuts up in the, here in the Northwest Highlands, but still viable and very, very sweet. Um, these have all been processed out of their husks um, um, on which they hang on the tree. Uh, you don't need to do that if you're stratifying them for growing for seed. We've been eating some of these, which is why we process them. Uh, to store them over winter, you don't want them drying out too much. Um, you want to kind of mimic their natural growing, which would be in the leaf litter in the woodland where they are or where squirrels stashed them. So I've got some leaf mould and it's actually hazel leaf mould. It's a whole mixture of stuff, mixed, mixed woodland, but there's some hazel leaf mould in there as well because um, plants like their uh, associated microbes. Uh, they help each other grow, they, they have good relationships. So you kind of try and mimic their natural growing conditions as much as possible. And I'm just layering these in with some leaf mould. So you keep them damp over winter but not too soggy. And the most important thing is going to be to keep the mice out. Pretty rough and ready. And just remember when these start sprouting in the spring, you want to be able to tease them out of the, the leaf mould uh, when they start opening up. And it's amazing to think that a root can break its way out of that hard shell. I can't even break them with my teeth. So all tucked up there. And then what I'm going to put on the top, so the most important bit is some netting. It's not a very good piece. It's got a hole in it. A mouse would get in there. And this is to keep the mice off because they would just think this is a, like a, a sweetie shop. And there we go. Thank you very much, Em. So I'm going to put a double layer on here. And these will start breaking open, germinating, putting their little root out in the spring. Hopefully after they've had a bit of chilling this winter. Um, I never label them, but if you're not sure what you've sown where, uh, you'd be best to give them a peg right on it. So hazel, so you know what it is. Once they started germinating, pot them up into indi individual pots. That's a little yogurt pot I used with a hole in the bottom for drainage. Leave them until they're big enough to plant out. I put in some hazel from different places because um, I like diversity. I think that's going to be key to survival is having a whole range of stuff. Some Because we don't know what climate's doing really. Uh, a range of stuff that will suit different, different climates, different conditions. So I've got walnuts in here. Um, planted almonds, you never know. Uh, I've got various fruit, the peach, nectarine, apricot in the tunnel, fig. Um, the so, almond, do you literally just plant the nuts? Uh, no, I bought, I bought a little almond tree. Right, okay. I bought a little almond tree. I have grown um, almonds from seed and I've grown um, sweet chestnut. Sweet chestnut from the sweet chestnuts that are gathered in the highlands. Uh, so they were, they were fecund, they were fruiting, big, mature sweet chestnut trees and that's something you really associate with Spain or the south of England and there they were producing edible, you know, small but edible nuts.
so I grew them. So I've got uh, sweet chestnut trees growing, growing away.